everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The 31 Nights of Halloween Horror! <laughs> the rainbows, the rainbows from hell! Yes, yes! Episode 3, episode 3 of the wonderful 31 straight nights of just mind-boggling, blood-curdling, disastrously destructive horror marathon. Yes, 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 and tonight, tonight, after yesterday's or last night's wonderful, and they're all wonderful, so I keep saying that, I don't know why, drink people, drink! Anyways, after last night's episode where I talked about the slasher, giallo, thriller, mystery, whatever you want to call it, that is Tenebra, and, or Tenebra, just, it's so, like, literally, they just give you a pronunciation catalog or something like that. Anyways, Dario Argento's, uh, I think somewhat, um, I mean, I don't know if it's underrated. I mean, somewhat not as up on his higher tier on many people's list, but still a great film. Anyways, so tonight I thought I would do a movie, a movie that I actually wanted to do last year because it was in the theaters, but it was only in the theaters for like a day and a half. So I was going to watch it in theaters and then do a review of it. But unfortunately, like I said, it was only out in in theaters in a day and a half, and I kind of have an understanding why. Anyways, according to the title, it is Eli Roth's love letter to the cannibal genre, The Green Inferno. Yes, The Green Inferno. Basically, The Green Inferno, they got the name because that's what they referred to the jungle in Cannibal Holocaust as the just a green inferno. It just burns you alive. And so what is this movie about? Well, other than being a tribute to those cannibal movies, like Cannibal Ferox, which is a really cool movie. Also, uh, sorry, Cannibal Holocaust, which is you know, one of my favorites. This movie is about, really it's about a girl. Uh, a girl who's a college freshman, and uh, she kind of gets in with the social justice activist crowd. And one of the things that I kind of like about this movie is that they set up that activism is bullshit and doesn't really do anything. And that it's mostly people who 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 want to show that they're they're good people. But you know, when when the the shit hits the fan, they're really not good people. And maybe that's why they need to like pretend that they care because deep down inside they're just as shallow and hollow or maybe even more shallow and hollow hollow than the rest of us and so anyways she kind of has this thing for the leader of this activist group and she gets invited to like one of their meetings by another guy who likes her so you know love triangle shit Anyways, he wants to stop the deforestation of the rainforest in this uh, area of Peru that's threatening this village of this uh, ancient tribe. And so his plan is to have them come down to the jungle, chain themselves to a bulldozer, live stream it, and make a point that, oh, look at all the, this horrible stuff that's going on, and then the... Uh, the national embarrassment will get the uh, government to, to put a stop to the uh, deforestation. Well, you, you think that sounds like all well and good, but, you know, good intentions can lead to the path of hell. And we actually find out that the whole thing was kind of bullshit. They, the project was bankrolled by a rival company that wants to get the the natural gas and minerals in the land and this was all set up to make the one company that already has it look bad and and abandon their project so the new company can come in and of course the leader of this activist group thinks that the the money and the attention would bolster uh their their uh their donors and get a whole bunch of volunteers and therefore uh, create a lot of international prestige for his organization, and of course himself. He fi he figures himself like a Che Guevara type of person, and we all know people who study real history know that Che Guevara was an asshole uh, murderer, 
and wasn't someone to look up to at all. But that's that's kind of how it is. You create these cults of personality and people just, ooh, because it's not about the person. It's about the goal, right? And as long as the goal is good, then the person can be like the worst monster in the history of the world because his intentions are pure. You know, all, all that kind of stupid bullshit. Anyways, so they go to the Amazon and the, the, the girl who is a daughter of, I guess, a, a UN diplomat ambassador type person. And the only reason why she was ever invited and they wanted her there was because they wanted to make an example. So instead of it just being, you know, uh, chained to the bulldozers and trees, they set her up to be the face of an international incident because they can't just, you know, beat and murder a daughter of a UN representative because that would just be like, <laughs> I don't know, I think he's actually a lawyer who works for the UN. But anyway, still, it's, yeah, international incident. So, of course, she's pissed off because she's feeling used uh, by by this group and this guy. And on their, uh, they... They make their point, they're trending, they're all happy, and on the plane ride back to uh, civilization, the engine malfunctions, or it was sabotaged, who knows, and the plane crashes in the middle of this green inferno, and that wonderful tribe of people that they wanted to save capture them and then torture and eat them. Yes, yes, because, like I said, it's got to be a cannibal film. So once again, one of these, it's one of these movies where... You, you have these good intentions, and you find out that everything is bullshit, and these these noble uh, people that they're trying to save are actually monstrous cannibals that will torture you and do horrible things to you. And, of course, uh, well, I mean, you know, we got cultural relativism, so we can't say that, you know, that that's they're, they're perfectly fine doing that. After all, you were trespassing, you know, because you accidentally had your engine blow up above their land and you landed in it, and even though you wanted to save them, so like they can continue their their murderous flesh eating way of life, <laughs> they're 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 not going to listen to you and uh basically eat you. And so like the whole thing is they're they're captured and all these horrific things happen. They find out that the girl is a virgin and so they're gonna do female circumcision on her. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> and that's all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's this crazy part where they, they had like this super potent pot with one of the stoner guys and one of the girls um, ends up dead and they put the, the pot in her so that when they eat her because they smoke her and stuff like that in a big smoking tent and they eat her, they get all high. And yes, there was a mo moment in this movie where there's all these high... Uh, villagers just like crazy high and like they're they're like this is a perfect opportunity to escape you know the one guy called it like a scooby-doo type of uh plan which was working but uh the the starter guy ends up uh something happens and he ends up still caught by these people but he's like oh well they're high you know i can do all these weird things and they're all laughing about it. and then he's like oh no no oh, they got the munchies and they start trying to bite at him and he's running away and then all of a sudden it was like a zombie movie he was getting literally torn to pieces by these people and getting throat but it's not zombies because they're actually real people so remember kids don't do drugs because you don't want to end up eating your 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 fellow human beings because, man, that's got to be, like, one of the biggest cases of the munchies ever. Anyways, so, Louie, I'm not going to spoil your thing, but the ending kind of was, like, what the hell? <laughs> I really I really didn't like the ending because it's, like, you know, uh, but I'm not going to talk about it because spoilers, but you'll watch it and you'll be, like, going, no way I would, I would like, call in the um, military to freaking firebomb that area after what happened to me. But anyways, I don't know. Maybe, you know. Not. So let's get into those scores. Violence and gore. It's going to be a five out of five. There is, you've got deoculations. You've got decapitations. You've got dismemberments. You've got uh, people just getting all sorts of fucked up. And, and it's it's nasty and gory. And therefore, yes, five out of five. It just 
deserves that score. Not something for everyone, uh, but for Gorehounds, it's 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 great to see a movie that doesn't really give a shit and and goes balls out for for the violence and gore. I mean, we're not getting enough of that. And you know, yes, we are having some good PG thirteen horror movies. I mean, it's it's hard. It's it's. I'm surprised I say it because you know that's pretty bad. But we still need some hardcore graphic shit still too. Because well, come on, we're all not just some narrow you know uh, community as horror fans. Let's get some mainstream violence and gore back into the, this uh, place, right? Okay, so anyways, going on to shock value. Shock value is a 4 out of 5. I mean, like the scenes like with the, the pot, and there's just there's all these little scenes and the violence itself are, that kind of just make you go, oh man, oh wow. And so I'm giving it a high shock value score, even though there's not like a, like a lot of frights and a lot of um, tension. There are some tense moments in there and it does kind of you know get you a little bit uh, on, on edge so I thought that was a, a pretty pretty nice job doing that there so a pretty high score four out of five acting I'm giving it three out of five I know they probably had like tons and tons of extras and it the natives felt like they were caricatures of natives and some of the, the actors uh, in the group were, you know, really just sort of over the top a little bit, a little too cliched. And so I couldn't give it like a really high score. Nothing, there was no performance that really stood out to me and said, oh man, this is some great acting. But I'm going to give it a little bit up there, three out of five. Plot, this is, this is, this is where, you know, everything seems to have problems. Uh, it's two and a half out of five. It's it's just average. Um, nothing super special happens. Yeah, sure, we get like the little, you know, uh, interesting twist when they're just using the girl. And also the twist where, you know, it was sort of backed by another company and it was not, it was complete bullshit and not real activism. But other than that, it's just a real basic A, B, C, D to E type of plot and nothing really spectacular happens. In fact, the pacing is a little bit uh, bad because the beginning is kind of slow and then in the middle you get this sort of downtime which is kind of slow and and throughout it I was just kind of like going like like uh, expecting something more to be going on and nothing really did happen that way. And it was disappointing because of that, so an average score, two and a half out of five. Nudity, another disappointment. Like, you almost had it. You almost had it. You almost, you had lots of violence, lots of gore, and you have, you know, tribeswoman, and you have captured females in the Amazon. You had the perfect opportunity for tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of nudity. And what do we get? Like partial dick shots of some of the stoner guy while he's trying to take a piss, which is like I don't even know why. But and then yeah, okay, you get some some things here and there, flashes, whatever, and most of it's like, you know, whatever. And then you get the, the girl getting ready for the uh circumcision and uh so you see her hits uh, a little bit there. And that's really all I'm going to give it. I really kind of wanted to give it a negative score, but up to that up to that point. But I'm like, no, oh, there's a little bit one out of five. But it's really disappointing. Don't get your hopes up if you wanted to see anything, any 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 nice pair <laughs> or anything like that. It uh, definitely misses that mark on the exploitation scale. But you know, I guess I don't know, if we got to be all you know new wave here. <laughs> Or something like that. <laughs> so, I guess just the lost generation of uh, good old, uh, what was that, Blood, Breasts, and Beast. It was the, the three that you need. <laughs> well, anyways. So, moving on. So, that's one out of five. Enjoyment factor. This is, this is, um, this is going to be telling about, you know, how I really felt about the overall thing. Is It's going to be a 2.75 out of five. The problems with the plot, the pacing, there were times where I just kind of felt a little bored, and it just felt like something was missing. And no, it wasn't lots more tits, but, you know, that could have helped. But no, it just, I don't know, it just felt like, like, 
I don't know, like, it just, it felt a little hollow. And even though I enjoyed some of the messaging and overall, you know, thought it was, you know, above average, I couldn't get it up to that three. There was just something there, and the and this bears in, out in my overall impression score, which is 2.75 out of 5. Um, just a little above average, but I can see why not a lot of people enjoyed this film. It felt like there was just something missing, and I just can't really put my finger on it. But in the end, it wasn't as great as it could have been, and so it had missed potential. And it's sad because I did really enjoy some of those uh, those older cannibal movies, and I thought, you know, what maybe we could get a resurgence of cannibal movies. But this was not the movie to do it because it felt like it wanted to go all out, and it just held itself back in areas. And I just couldn't, you know, give it a higher score because of that. And that all averages out to a three out of five. So there you have it. The Green Inferno. This 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 video is going to be uploaded really late because I'm I am <laughs> I've worked I'm, I'm basically working a late shift. So technically I've recorded this before I went to work, but it's not going to be rendered in time for me to um, upload it before I get to work. So I'm going to have to wait till after, which is going to be like after 11.30 at night, so it's going to be like 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning when this actually gets finally um, available on YouTube. So sorry about that, people. I, I, I apologize. However, my schedule can go all over the place, mornings, mids, nights, all over the place, so I'm, I'm sorry about that. But there you have it, The Green Inferno. What did you think? Did you like the movie? Did you Do you like cannibal movies? Did you want me to review Cannibal Holocaust or Cannibal Ferox? I have both of those movies, though, however, Cannibal Ferox, I'll have to break out the old VCR to watch that one again. Oh, man. And some of you kids are probably going like, what the hell is a VCR? <laughs> yeah, I know, back in the old days, we had these things where the movies were on this uh, magnetic tape. <laughs> yeah, instead of discs, anyways. Okay, but I'm going to leave it at that. So, uh, episode three in the books, and I will see you next time. And stay hungry, Internet.